I mean fight, uh, Babamba, and we have to, to have a sit here because we are going to start with the discussion. Um, first of all, before we start with the discussion from the floor, I'd like to give uh, a comment based on their presentations. Uh, personally, personally, I think two of these presentations, they are so um, complementary, if you like. From one presentation, we we were touching on the idea of dissemination, dissemination of publication, which is very crucial because the role of university in Indonesia, hopefully, is not just being a teaching university, but also as a research, a, a true research university. And then following up with the presentation from Buyati, uh, we talk about the collaboration and networking among those universities, which is very crucial because you know. If you've been here, you know, you've seen so many co collaborations, I'm talking about recent collaborations, and uh, basically this is one of the keys for today's talk. Right, okay, in that case, let me invite some questions from the audience. We've got a question there. Could you please introduce your name, uh, affiliations, and please be precise with your questions, okay? <laughs> a month ago, exactly a month ago. Um, the, uh, your question is uh, in relation to what is the current uh, policies of the Indonesian government in regards to support the uh, uh, research developments, including whether Indonesian government uh, has already considered the role of uh, diasporas that uh, uh, who are maybe found everywhere around the world. I think uh, 
you were right that the um, every almost every single institutions like I, I just mentioned about Ristek, they are also VPs. They have also their own vision and mission. But I think this is when we talk about the government, then maybe I just refer to uh, Kementerian Riset dan Teknologi, who is I, uh, I suppose or I assume this is the uh, the main institution who is responsible for the uh, organizing the whole uh, research agendas uh, uh, throughout the Indonesia. And um, of course, there are there is a, a, re, a big research agenda that has already been uh, developed or um, set by the Ministry of Ristek. Uh, and there, there are some focuses, including, um, well, the, the big umbrella with what I have seen so far is exactly uh, uh, the same or quite similar with the, uh, the, the agenda in which I, I visited the KNAW. Uh, what is that for? Can I include uh, Academy? Yes, uh, for something, something like that. Yes, the Royal Academy of Science in the Netherlands. Yes, yes. so um, this is the, uh, uh, one of the counterparts yeah. with uh, dealing with the uh, Indonesian yeah. research. Yeah. There are some um, uh, emphasis on, on risk, like the, including the marine uh, research, and then I think medical it will be also one of the uh, their, their focus. They are focusing especially in medical will be uh, dealing with uh, aging. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, okay. I think everything but yeah. should be related to aging. Because uh, maybe uh, in the very near future we'll be also dealing a lot with uh, the aging society in Indonesia. Everybody, well, everybody will getting old, but the amount or the pro uh, proportions of the elderly will be maybe higher. So the, the, there will be also focused on the uh, aging, uh, medical uh, research related to aging. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. The two other focuses that has already have already been established in that in that scheme. But also uh, the, the, the the focus on marine, for instance, we are aware that our, we are living in an archipelago. So, so even our uh, uh, perairan <laughs> is even uh, lebih luas than the, uh, <laughs> the the daratan, yeah. Um, <laughs> Saya mau bikin bahasa Inggrisnya agak wah wah susah ini. Seperti pada sih bahasa Indonesia udah sudah udah beda kan ya. So um, daratan is even less than uh, uh, lautan. So uh, marine, for instance, marine re uh, research is very important. And then um, yeah, the role of diaspora I think is very important. But I, I didn't see any uh, specific. I haven't seen yeah any specific uh, intention on how to use or not to use, but the. Uh, to take the advantages of having the diasporas as one of our uh, resources. So I think that will be a good input for us to remind that we have our uh, colleagues, our brothers and sisters, uh, the diasporas um, who are located throughout the world. And um, because international uh, collaboration cannot be avoided. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have money. Uh, that we should, I also agree with uh, Professor Yati, that we should not always rely on the uh, the uh, financial support from from overseas, although in uh, that is the case actually at the moment that we still uh, rely on that support. But in some cases, I think because we have also the uh, the resources, the uh, the bargaining positions of our uh, side is that like Ibuyati said that okay, when it is published, then I should be or we should be the uh, the primary uh, author. Not the secondaries or the tertiaries or the third, fourth authors. Yeah. So normally that is uh, uh, an important part of when we have to publish and when we have the, uh, to apply for the patents uh, or intellectual property, uh, something like this. So um, I'm not quite sure whether I'm answering the question, but those are the points that I would like to respond. Sorry to interrupt, but perhaps we. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Actually, I'm not. I. I I wonder whether I really I am answering your query, but actually I would like to share uh, to have a message to give them message important message regardless the percentage of the uh, money used in the developed countries even developed countries even America they not, they cannot use their own money only they cannot why 
because it was huge money, especially for discovery. So that's why actually Professor Sofian Effendi, our previous rector and now the chair of the Professor Association in Indonesia, he said that most of the Nobelists are started the Nobel Prize from their PhD, PhD topics, PhD uh, research. research. So this is very important. Why well, I'm very happy to be here because you are the one who will get it. And see, sorry to say, I never use the government money. Why? Because because it is very small compared to the need to do research. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. And and you we know I know well that the government in developed countries also need money, the researcher. So they, but they cannot get the money from international agency. Why? Because they have to work in collaboration with developing countries. This is another bargaining power of us. So so that's why if we know exactly what we are going to do, and which is not only the important for our nation, but for the from the international uh, community. So that's why very important to choose the topics, like diarrhea. It is not only in developing, because what? But the virus is actually killing, not killing, because they can treat the patient with dehydration. That they, they really absorb the money of the country, of the government. So that's why, please start now, choose it, and not dependent into your own resources. International resources. Because why right, international we have the similar position. We 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 are not under the our uh, developed countries collaborators. Because this is the money belong to the international thing. So that's why please start from now that you have to work all the time. I'm seventy, but never finished seven with seventy. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, because why? Because uh, I like Stefan. No. <laughs> no, what I mean is very important to regenerate. It. Yeah. So now I'm uh, what is that? Leading, uh, chairing the uh, all the research active, uh, center or something like that. The young scientists are there. They work there one year, two years. So because we have to stimulate them. What? have to do to uh, never, end, never ending research. And this is very important, so this is my message. So that, uh, sorry to say that government, we need, actually, we need um, wisdom from the government. Why? Because at the moment, we are very difficult dealing with so many regulations and law, like an MTA, Material Transfer Agreement. Yeah, so that you cannot just bring your uh, specimen to the outside, you have to plan to do this. And yes, I do agree because why? Uh, the late, not the late, the previous minister uh, have a, had a bad experience. She was offered to buy um, a seat of the vaccine that come from Indonesia. How come that you get our strain? Yes, because, uh, and finally we just found out that it was stolen. Stolen from one of the sources. So we have to be very careful. Indeed, we have to keep our specimen because this is one of our, uh, what is that? Yeah. So this is very important, but sorry to say, the MTA, I am the member of the MTA national, but sorry to say, but because we are not being prepared, so that's very difficult to serve the 72 universities, <laughs> medical schools. <laughs> How can that we can prevent ourselves? Not necessarily to be told by the government. You are not. You get to have the permission or something like that because it needs time to wait until. The, but we are the one who really knows how important it is. So that we have to go by ourselves to the then to go back and <coughs> have to be. Uh, so this is one thing that I'm going to say. Thank you very much. More than ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> few minutes left okay so I invite one last questions from the gentleman who's sitting in the back could you please introduce yourself affiliation and keep it short please um, I'm Satya Bishri from 
I'm a course researcher at the Institute <coughs> uh, for Advanced Material here in the next building. So, um, yeah, I, I chose several questions. Uh, one regarding the policy that uh, Pahari uh, explained. The thing is, like, uh, from your talk, uh, I still did, didn't really get the big framework about what kind of research policy in Indonesia it is. Um, but what I aware is in Indonesia, we have a framework so called the SINAS, uh, System Innovation National. But the problem is, uh, until now, uh, as a researcher outside, we still don't see how it was implemented in a good way, in particular uh, regarding about uh, how to utilize the Indonesian scientist diaspora outside. But one thing that I noticed from uh, your answer is that we don't have the money. But if we consider how big is our GDP compared with China, we have 10% GDP. But then, why when China, uh, for example, can improve their research by putting a program like 100 talent, inviting 100 big researcher, uh, Chinese-born uh, researcher outside the country to come back to China, give like 1.5 million as a start grant, why, as in Indonesia, why we cannot make like 10 talent every year? Mm. Or 100 plan, I think. That's uh, one of the things, why something missing there. And also uh, regarding about how to allocate the research money, um, why Japan can put 30%, but actually it's not really 30% because they also calculate how Sony gives the money to research. And because I was also in Japan uh, seeing how they, the research work uh, there, one important thing that we miss when we make the research policy is that we didn't think that by putting money upstream to the scientists, actually the money trickling down towards the industry because scientists need to buy equipment mm -hmm. and the equipment itself stimulate new startup companies and from there people get the food. Yeah. And that, meanwhile in Indonesia we give uh, subsidy to gasoline which is one quarter of our state budget. Why don't we just simply take that uh, subsidy, provide to the scientists, and make that frequent down effect? So I think that uh, could be one of the best solutions. And also regarding the research collaboration outside, um, I got experience last year when writing a proposal for a, a European Union funding is that the biggest problem is when in the EU there is a chance to invite Indonesian researchers through the ICPC program. But the big constraint is to we have difficulties in, in finding who we can take. Because to give them ICP, as an ICPC country, to give the money to Indonesia, then we need also to find a real uh, scientist that can also give an in-kind research to yeah. make this consortium. Mm -hmm. So actually, that's, uh, we need to bridge this gap. So I think that's uh, my questions. I mean, yeah, either to Pahari and All right, okay. I'll give it back to the presenter. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the. Uh, I don't think the, uh, these all are all questions, but also some of your uh, suggestions. Um, let me just try to assume that myself with the Ministry of Respect. I wish I I were the minister. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> At least this uh, whole. Uh, Audiences here pray for me. Um, yeah, um, this is the point. Uh, that I have to imagine that I have to, I am the minister. Um, yes, uh, I think what we have already not yet uh, really pay attention is on the uh, on how we really calculate the, the uh, figures. You're right, maybe Japan uh, calculated that it up to 30% because there are companies like Sony, like Toshiba or whatever, the brands, they are really contributing to the country towards uh, supporting the research. Maybe uh, the, the figures that we have here, um, we really have to have a look at it carefully. This is mainly from the uh, national budget. But again, when you compare with China, in which China has here uh, even less of GDP with uh, compared to us, then um, oh, well, I'm not uh, have a good uh, background in, in calculating or uh, economics. But then uh, you were right that we uh, uh, have.
have to be careful in, in, in have a look at the, at the figures. And again, I think uh, highlighting uh, Professor Yadi's uh, uh, remarks that don't just rely on the, uh, the national budget because it's very small and will be just, maybe it will be a spend only for uh, for instance, and that's it. Um, so we, we uh, the international collaborations, international uh, organization are uh, available. For instance, uh, it, it really depends on us on how we can be trusted, or can we have to uh, give them a trust uh, in preparing the proposals, so that we we will be able to get uh, international support. And yes, again. Uh, uh, diaspora is, is one of our potential support in that case, so uh, I would really uh, take that into the notes. Uh, very short, uh, another message. Actually, I never gave up <coughs> with talking with the government, being involved in the national committee, etc. However, I never stopped in doing international research, right? By waiting, it's like waiting for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I think, yeah, and collaboratory we can get from the international budget. I have already developed, not I, we are already, we are developing very huge laboratory for dengue, for diary, for everything. But if we are waiting until only to our government, I'm afraid that there are so many things that I cannot share with you later outside this. But never give up, even though I'm berdarah darah. <laughs> Actually, we are not, it is not, we are never feel inferior because this is international budget. And also, yeah. the Harvard professor who come to Indonesia twice, you know, our collaborator, they always ask to work with us and they always ask our idea because that is the only one that they can get the money from the international budget. So stay mellow. So that's why we don't need to be pessimistic. But the reason why collaboration and networking is very important. If even though we don't have the money, we have the brain. But we also have the heart. So then please do and explore your local wisdom to, to face the problem globally. Thank you very much. Uh, the first session, scaling up scientific research in Indonesia, well, it's my uh, personal opinion as an academic or as yourself as a scientist, try to be more entrepreneurial, do not depending on the government money. You know, there is a lot of ways to go to Rome, so explore those experiences. And while you are here, might be a good uh, idea to collaborate with other researchers to steal the knowledge how to make a good proposal because that's one of the things that you cannot get while you are in Indonesia. Okay.